you guys welcome to another video on my channel i am so glad to see you here and today is actually gonna be something a bit different you know i decided to mix it up a little bit i've been called to sort of share with you some rituals habits or things that i've been really loving recently and i hope my sort of a main aim of this video is i guess to just inspire you to maybe change some things up in your routine for autumn for winter because you know the days are getting shorter now the weather is kind of depressing let's be honest even though today the weather is so nice in london and i think that's the motivation that's coming in for me and i was like okay let's get it done let's let's make a video but anyways without further ado let's get into the habit and the first habit that i probably have started about two weeks ago which is not a long time but still i decided to share it because it's been really inspiring and really perspective shifting and it is morning pages so if you don't know what, what morning pages are it's basically writing two pages two three pages I mean, I think originally it should be three, but I did too, if I'm being honest. But I also write really like small uh, size, so I guess it's the same thing, okay? But anyways, it's writing two to three pages every single morning. First thing in the morning, you wake up and you do it of just your stream of consciousness. So it doesn't have to be about your emotions, about how you're feeling, but it can be anything. It can be literally you writing down, oh, I'm drinking my black coffee or I'm drinking my latte and it tastes so good. I woke up and the first thing I thought about was X, Y, Z. You know, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It's whatever is on your mind. You're just putting it down on a paper. And some days, obviously you're like, I don't know what else I can write write it down write down that you don't know what else to say and that basically what morning pages are just write it down everything that's on your mind whether it's good whether it's bad it does not matter just anything that comes to your mind first thing in the morning and where i got this from because this is not my invention i got it from a book that i've been recently working with it's a 12-week course from julia cameron let me show you the book so you get a better idea of what i'm talking about You did not see that so this is the book it's called the artist's way and i got it literally on amazon for like 10 pounds or something i think it's a used version but it is a book which basically takes you through a course course of sort of expanding your creativity and discovering your creative self and one of the basis of this whole course and this whole book is morning pages so what i did is i basically just bought this little notebook and i use it only for the morning pages so when i first started two weeks ago i just used my other journal but i was like i don't want to use it up too quickly so i just bought a separate journal specifically for morning pages and it's been working really great for me i got this one from muji it's just like the most basic one and yeah and i just write every morning as you can see i haven't written that much yet in this one but it's been really working well for me and to answer something that you're probably thinking which is why write those free pages every single morning like free pages sounds like so much and i totally get it because i'm the type of a person who when they journal i journal half a page maybe a page max like i'm very brief with my thoughts but here you need to write those two to three pages and it's a challenge in itself a little bit but when you're writing about anything like it just flows eventually eventually you learn to just let it all out and it sort of flows some days it's easier some days it's harder but the benefits are crazy because why we are doing all of that is sort of clear ahead ahead of the next day and unlock all of the ideas and all of the concepts that maybe wouldn't have come through if we had all of those other things on our mind writing those two free pages have been so great for me and it's really been making me feel motivated in the morning which is a good thing because it's not really the case every single day um so yeah that is the first habit that i've been doing and i've been really really loving so definitely give it a try if it sounds like something you might need another little habit slash thing that i've been trying to do is finding fun activities around my area or just in the city that i can do out of my house so obviously with winter with autumn we spend much more time at home this is you know the season of homebodying which i personally am a big fan of but because the days are so great the days are so short we still need to make the effort to get out of the house and do something because otherwise you know sitting at home that much rotting at home that much 
it's not beneficial. Let's be honest, we need to get out of the house once every now and again. And I think there is no better way to do it than to find some fun things that are happening in the city, whether they are free or not, you know, it's whatever you can find and do them with your friends or on your own. For example, I myself last week found this event in the Victoria and Albert Museum. It was a free event where you can just come, look at some exhibitions, there were some workshops there as well, and I just went there on my own, you know? I spent one and a half hours there in the evening on Friday, and it was such a fun little thing because, you know, I dressed up, I put some makeup on, I felt good with myself, and I got out of the house to do something that I don't usually do, which also just expands your mind and, again, helps your creativity to kind of flow and, and you get more ideas when you get exposed to all of those different stimuli that you usually don't get exposed to. So finding some fun activities, you know, whether it's puppy yoga, maybe in a park, autumn is still a good time, winter probably not, but autumn, you know, we're still at that season. So definitely something that you could do. Pottery classes, painting classes. For example, I want to go to paint and wine or wine and paint with one of my friends. I feel like that's such a fun concept or just some events at museums, exhibitions, some walks. There is like some hot girl walks in London. I know I've heard about them. I've never been but I have heard about them. And so maybe something like that even. A run club is such a popular activity this year. There is just so much happening. And I feel like for the longest time, me and myself, I wasn't really aware of those things. And I wasn't really putting the effort in to find those cool things, cool events happening around me. So many of them are free, which we should take advantage of. So definitely, look for them. My biggest tip is just to look on TikTok, honestly, to like fun activities in your city. Or obviously, if you live in a smaller city, then maybe you have some groups or you can ask your friends if they know anything. I'm sure there are so many amazing things happening around you that you don't know about. So definitely put the effort in to find those things. And even if you don't feel like it, try to go because you are gonna thank yourself. We need to get out of the house once every now and again. And as much as it feels amazing to just sit at home under a blanket, you need to get out sometimes even for your mental health okay so make it fun and enjoy third thing that i have been loving is putting a bit more effort into making your surroundings a bit more cozy a bit more nice because you guys we spend a lot of time at home as i said so now we're gonna focus a second ago we were focusing about what to do outside of our homes and now we're coming back in and i want you to take those extra three minutes it's just three minutes nothing else it doesn't have to be anything crazy take those three minutes and make your surroundings better whether it's you know you coming back from work and wanting just to chill or maybe you're working from home or maybe you're studying from home or you just came back from school make your surroundings more cozy by you know pulling out your favorite blanket and just sitting in your blanket making yourself some hot tea or hot chocolate oh my god you guys I have been making this amazing hot chocolate, hot, hot cocoa. Like I'm gonna call it hot cocoa in my house. And it is so easy. I feel like most of us have the ingredients for it. So let me share with you the recipe. You need milk and to measure how much I need, I just literally pull out the mug that I want to use to drink it. So I pour that much milk, pour it into the pot. Then I add a heaping tablespoon of cocoa powder just plain cocoa powder, no sugar, no nothing. A dash of vanilla extract. It's optional, you don't have to do it, but it tastes better with that. A pinch of salt, then one tablespoon of maple syrup or honey, and you just boil it all together until you know it's, it's boiling, um, while obviously stirring it so that the lumps of cocoa powder eventually disappear as it's heating up. And it is honestly so delicious. I love it so much, so definitely try it out. So yeah, blanket, hot cocoa or hot tea. Maybe, you know, you can light up your favorite candle. I love doing that. And put some jazz in the background. Oh my God. There is nothing better to listen to than jazz around, you know, autumn and winter. I love it so much. But a fun fact about me is I cannot listen to any jazz. For me personally, I always search up happy jazz or uplifting jazz because the thing is i get music really affects me emotionally and so when i listen to like some something a bit more sentimental or sad it can easily put my mood down or make me reflect a bit too much and you know it's not always the time for that like yeah i like to reflect sometimes but i'd rather not do it when i want to focus or when i want to chill and just read my book so 
make your surroundings more cozy. It doesn't take a long time, but it really does affect your mood and affect how you're feeling in your own surroundings, especially now as it gets darker at like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. <sighs> yeah, so make it cozy, make it nice for yourself because you deserve it. Next up, I have been trying to enter my work-life balance era <laughs> recently because your girl is really struggling with snowy because for the longest time I would work through the weekends, I would work through the weekdays, I would just keep on working every single day, I would do something for my work. And as much as obviously it is necessary to have sometimes, we go through you know, busy periods where we do need to put that extra effort and that extra time into our work. But in the long term, it is definitely not the best strategy because it just leads us to burnout. And I personally have been burnt out so many times. So now as I sort of took some time off and recovered from it, I am really, really cautious with how much time I spend on work and that balance between work and life, how much I record, how much I don't record and all of those things. So that is something that I'm really focusing on this season. And it's nothing crazy, it is very simple. I do my best to take weekends off work and completely switch off. I don't edit anything. I try not to think about work, not to think about ideas. Obviously, if something comes up and I'm like, oh, that's a good idea, I'm just gonna write it down. No, I'm not gonna deep it. I'm not gonna do any work around it. I'm just gonna write it down, leave it for Monday. But I'm trying as much as I can to just sort of separate my life, my private life, you know, friends or just my hobbies with work. Because if we blur the line, it is a really tricky road to be on. And if you can't take the whole weekend, even take a day. For example, this week actually, I'm probably not gonna be able to take the whole weekend off, but I know that I'm definitely gonna take Sunday off because it is such a game changer to at least take that one day off to just focus on everything else that you love doing and that you've been wanting to do for a while. And actually here, I guess this is gonna be sort of an extra little habit, but finding little hobbies that you can enjoy on those days off or when you have some free time is such an amazing thing. Cause you know, one thing is to take a day off and be like, oh, what do I do? Like I'm bored, what, what am I supposed to do? And not really enjoying that time. Because let's be honest, it happens to all of us. For me personally, sometimes, you know, the weekend comes and I'm like, what do I do? Like, I want to work because I have nothing else to do. And that's where those hobbies comes in hand. And for example, just to give you, you know, some ideas, just have been trying out some different makeup looks from Pinterest or something, just, you know, looking for them, trying them out, why not? Also something that I've been enjoying is actually doing my nails. I don't know, it's just so relaxing. I put some YouTube video or some movie in the background and I just do my nails. It is such a cool little activity that I feel like I don't always have time for during the week. So I just do it during the weekend. You know, it's an hour of your day. You're just kind of focusing on something that is not your phone. And yeah, I've been really loving it. Another thing, you know, you can also go to the farmer's market on a Sunday. Up until now, I did it once, but I have to say, I honestly loved it so much. I made it a whole experience. You know, I got my tote bag. I bought myself a coffee on that farmer's market. I got some different veggies, fruit, walked around, just looked. Also the vibe on farmer's market is just so nice. People are just like chilling, you know, in their groups of friends. I don't know, I just really love it. I feel like the energy is really high there. And then I went to a little park. I sat in the sun, but obviously, it's not always the sun, but it's fine. You know, just taking a little walk. Maybe you can take a walk to that farmer's market. Maybe get off the public transportation, stop earlier and just walk there. You know, just making it a little bit of an experience so you can really enjoy it. Another thing, maybe you can do some baking, a baking session. I've been loving just cooking at home a little more recently and trying new recipes, because obviously easy to just go for your usual recipe that you know how to do, that you don't have to think about it, 15 minutes done but maybe put some effort in and just make something new that you've never done or you've been wanting to do, but you never found an opportunity to. And the last thing is just building different boards on Pinterest. I know it sort of feels a little bit like a waste of time, but that's what weekends are for. Weekends are for things that you might think are a waste of time during the week, but weekends are just to relax and just to enjoy. And I find making Pinterest boards so fun, so inspiring, so motivating. So definitely give it a try. I love Pinterest. I am the biggest fan, I have to say. I've been using it literally every single day over the last couple of months. 
So doing Pinterest boards is definitely a really good time filler if you want to get yourself inspired and motivated and excited for the future. And you guys, we are slowly getting to the end of the video and I have one last habit that I've been practicing recently and that is finishing my days off with reading. So something that I've recently noticed is that when I use my phone before sleep, like, you know, I'm laying in bed, I'm doing something on my phone, I find it so much harder to fall asleep. I think it's just the overstimulation that our phones give us. And the thing is like, I feel like I don't feel overstimulated after using my phone before sleep, but then I am just laying in that bed and I'm like, what's going on? I cannot fall asleep. Whereas if I leave my phone on my bedside table and I focus on a book and I make sure that before sleep, I just read my book. I fall asleep like a baby. So a new addition to my evening routine has been just finishing my days off with some reading. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to even be 30 minutes. It can simply be 15 minutes, 10 minutes of reading, but just reading, okay? Like no phones, no watching any videos, movies, just a book, magical, honestly. And something that I've been really enjoying recently is actually going to a bookshop and just finding different cool books, you know, spending, I don't know, 30 minutes in a bookshop and just reading the backs of the books, seeing what I like, what I don't like. And also a big tip is obviously finding what genres of books you like. So for example, for me, I really love some crime books or mystery books where there is some sort of a mystery and they're trying to discover it. Um, I really love obviously romances sometimes or what else I'm trying to think. I also obviously like self-development books, but you guys, for the night, let's try to focus on really enjoying those books because I feel like self-development books, they are cool. They teach us a lot, but they are not necessarily books that you can relax with, okay? These are books that teach you something. This is education. And for the night, you just want to relax. You just want to enjoy. That's the thing. I feel like our mornings and our evenings should be for enjoyment. They are not necessarily the time to, you know, do crazy things and learn and whatever. Obviously, if that's your only time where you can do that, go for it. But me personally, I have been really prioritizing just enjoying myself those two times during the day. So I opt in for books that I really enjoy, that really sort of pull me in and I cannot get myself to stop. And I have some books that I can recommend to you guys if you're looking for something to read, to just enjoy. Some books that I really, really loved reading. So here are the books that I can truly recommend to you. And let me go through them all with you. So we got Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Melrose. Then I actually just finished this book. It is so good, I have to say. Even though it starts kind of slow, but yeah, it is such a good one. It's The Hike by Lucy Clark. And it's actually funny because I bought it on the airport like a year ago and I did not touch it up until recently. But I just finished it. Such a good one. Then we got A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. Oh, this is a classic. I loved it so much. It is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Amazing. You need to read that book. I swear, if you haven't read it, read it. It is so good. And it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And the book that I'm reading right now is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mosh Feg. I hope I read it right. I cannot really tell you whether I like it or not quite yet because I just started it, but I will keep you updated in my future vlogs so you know if it's worth reading because I know the reviews for this one are very mixed. So let's see if I like it. For now, I'm on like, I'm on page 40 and I like it, but we'll see how it is um, once I read more. So these are some of my recommendations. These are just fiction books. These are books for enjoyment. Obviously, if you want me to also share some of my recommendations for self-development, more like educational sort of books, let me know. I would love to show you. And you guys, I think that is it. These are some habits and rituals that I've been loving and I've been doing over the last couple of weeks or months. I hope you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, you found it inspiring. Let me know down below in the comments if there are any things that you have been doing and you have been loving in the past couple of weeks. And yeah guys, by the way, look at the sun. It is so nice. It's because of the leaves behind my window. How pretty that is. Amazing. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so, so much. 
and I will see you in the next video next week.